shall overcome. Huh. Yeah. Someday. We want um, a public apology um, um, from the police department for, for Benny War, and we want the police officers involved to be fired. Um, well, I came out here today to support community call to action for Benny War. I think it's really important that there's public display of disapproval of the horrific actions of the police department. Um, and we were discussing a little bit, there was a, the interview today with Police Shepherd that was circulating and to hear that the uh, that the way to justify this is that any citizen could be ranked as lower quality or class than anybody else is in itself like enough reason to be out here well, I'm I don't you, know what to say. I'm Chief. glad you bring that point up is because, um, you know, we work very closely with the Jefferson Avenue Business Association. Yeah. And what they've tried to do is, um, you know, there's been a lot of work done on Jefferson Avenue with yeah. new streets, new curbs. Mm -hmm. Businesses want to want to thrive. And so what they've tasked us with is clearing the block. Because what they don't want is when you have these clusters of people that are um, hanging out. It's going to kill business. Selling dope, it kills business. Yeah. And so that's part of our, right. our task is to get out there and clear the block. The message is enough is enough, um, and we know that we're in a, a neighborhood of predominantly, you know, great and stuff. But you know, we are people. Um, we are first of all and foremost people, and um, so the only way that we can come together, the only way that we can breathe together, is we all come together, one unity, one body, one strength. I'm not here to support my friend. We, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a minister. I'm a pastor, co-pastor of a church, and this church is joined together with that church. It's the several of us. And I'm here for her husband. Come on, we need freedom, man. Healthcare for all, a security plan. Reparation for black and indigenous fam. Self-determination for my sister and friends. Divide freedom. freedom. Is it just a point in the cuffs? Cause not being locked up just isn't enough. Divide freedom. Don't have to be locked in prison. To be a victim of this capitalist system. Come on, we want freedom. Self-determination for our people. Freedom. Equity in order to be equal. Said freedom. Nelson Mandela back on the street. 26 on the beef and seeking freedom and peace. First of all, um, I, I would like to say to everyone um, for coming out today, um, Benny, on behalf of him um, and his wife, I, we just want to say thank you, community, um, for coming out um, in a time of support. Um, and I just can't say enough. My heart is just overwhelmed with all the love and support. And it's not only about Benny, it's about us, it's about the people. And, uh, before we get started, we have to first of all open up with prayer. Amen. 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 We're going to ask everyone just to close our eyes for a moment. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven today. My name is Hubert. I know why I'm here. Do you know why you're here? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we know this. That on this corner right here, Benny, Benny, Benny was attacked. He was attacked for waiting on the bus by a vicious police force. We're not just asking them to step down. We're asking them to be fired. Yeah. 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 We're asking them to send a message yeah. throughout the community. Look, this will not be tolerated. Come on now. No, we don't want them sitting behind the desk. We want them no longer on the force. Yeah. We're calling for that. Yeah. We're calling for any demands we have. We, we're calling for them to end the racial profile. Yeah. Yeah. We, we call for any cruelty done by the police. Yeah. Verbal, for verbal disputes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we're calling for that. Enough is enough. 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 They're not. They're not going to give anything. We have to take their power. Yeah. Right. And we can't do it with violence. That's right. Because that ain't going to work. That's that's their way. That's not going to be our way. To get them off the street and to change their ways. Yes. We're going to have to take their power. We're going to have to go to their bosses. And when their bosses don't do nothing, we're going to go to their boss. And his boss has already said he isn't going to do nothing. And then there's one more boss who we can get out. And all the other bosses who say that they have our best interests at heart. And who say... That's right. Who say they want to have they all the bragging they're doing about this awesome uh, accountability board that they have that doesn't do anything. Mm. We need a new one. We need one that has serious power that doesn't answer to the police. The right. police can't right. police itself. Right. How do you want our teach it? How should we teach our children to respect the police when they're hearing nothing but constant stories of how they're putting their their foot in our necks? 
It's not enough of a challenge to, to survive day to day. You come into the neighborhood without a kind word to say. When you disperse in our neighborhood, you better do it with care. Because we ain't taking brutality, not here, not there, not anywhere. All right. Okay, how, how can we respect the officer who's doing all his beat? If the cops only intend to disrupt the neighborhoods in the streets. Our backs were not designed to hold your shoe or foot. Enough is enough, and we will not be shook. Oh. Myself and my family witnessed the entire incident as we were driving home from downtown, and I plan to tell you exactly what happened. But in addition to what I saw with my eyes, there's other truth that has to be spoken as well. Mm. And a lot of people here are saying, you know, this isn't about black and white, this is about, uh, you know, this is a human issue and the police shouldn't be treating people bad and it really doesn't have anything to do with race. But I'm sorry, the truth is, this is a product of an entirely racist society mm. that we were all born into, we were all socialized by, we were all taught how to behave and what permissions we have mm. and how to feel and how to be afraid or how to be mad from a different background depending on how you were raised and nurtured. And one of the things that I have to be honest about is that what made me have the confidence to zip in here in that white car you all saw in the video and step out and get close to the police and talk to Mr. War, mm. what allowed me to do that is what I was socialized to and the permissions that I have, the rights that I have, that are the rights of everyone, That's right. but they're different if you've been raised as a white person in this society. Mm. That privilege, that confidence is not something I feel good about. I was confident to go up to those police because that's how I was raised. All right. I was allowed. That's a whole different story for a lot of other people here. And I want to acknowledge that and I want to say that in order for us to find our humanity, all of us, we come from a different place. And part of my struggle to find my humanity is to tell the truth about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Woo. If we are serious, about changing things. We all have to be a little bit uncomfortable. And we have to rely on each other. We're going to all be together when we march, when we speak, when we confront, when we carry this forward. Like Mr. Addy has said, this is a long-term struggle. We have to be together. We have to support each other. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. So very briefly, what happened was we were coming home from downtown, as we often do because we live on our net across Bartlett. We were at that intersection, we saw two police officers on either side of that garbage can there. I'm like, why are they standing there doing nothing? What is, you know, what's the police doing there? You know, like, about as far as I am from this person, just standing there. And then we realized there was a man in a wheelchair, a motorized scooter behind that garbage can. Next thing I know, just as soon as it was revealed before my eyes that there was a man in a wheelchair there, the police violently tipped him over and shoved him onto the sidewalk. Thank you for seeing it. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So Thank you. we came in the parking lot. I jumped out of the car. I went up and I witnessed. I said, what's going on? And I um, basically tried to bear witness because that's about all you can do when the police are attacking someone. And there were other people here bearing witness, including my husband and my daughters, unfortunately. And that's another story in itself. Right. Our young people do not need to see white police officers beating down black elders. Our young people do not need to see the police beating on other young people. Right, right, right. So, just one other detail that I did witness because there's been some discussion regarding this video that's on YouTube, which the video did not capture, but which absolutely did happen, was a very hard, violent kick to Mr. War's head. There were multiple kicks, there were multiple punches from the police against Mr. War. There was a particularly violent, hard kick to his head that I witnessed from three feet. How about the maze? That's the truth. I, I did not witness Mace because I was on I was in the car at that point. That's enough. It's enough. So enough is enough. Enough, enough is enough. enough. I was here and prior to that, knocking him down on, on the chair in the wheelchair, they was aggro they agitated him and was flipping his hat. Culturally, that's totally disrespect to a black man. Yeah. And you know, playing with his hat. 
It was to aggravate him. If he said something to him, fine. But he said nothing that merited the action to happen after that. Um, I know a lot of us in this community have seen a lot worse, a lot of other things, and we've endured it. But in experience, but enough is enough. Um, I I had to move just because my wife is a white lady. I'm not white. Get your F ass over and out of here. So I had to take my kids and move over here. And the first officer that arrived, he came over here with me and a group of kids, young people, maybe 18, 19, about seven of them. You know what he told them? It's unbelievable. He told them and had his finger out, intimidating. He said, is anybody over here worried about him? As if he was even worried about him. You was gonna get beat up. You was gonna get beat up or locked up. We all that, worried about that him. That was just that was just amazing to me that he could even come out his mouth like that. You know, enough is enough. Um like I say, we've been through a lot already, but this is the straw that broke the camel's back. Enough is enough. Um, we have to fight back. Um, this shit is like normalized. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you, be honest with you, my community, we would have even respected it if he had just said, my bad, my bad, I, I lost control. We would have respected that. But you think we got that? No, we got some BS, you know. Um, and now, my bad is not good enough. My bad is not good enough. Uh -huh. You know, if you'd have said it right then, it would have been acceptable, man. I could just go. I'm still outraged. I'm, I'm really upset that my kids had to witness this and maybe think that this is normal. Actually, it is normal in this community, and that's what we got to stop. Because enough is enough. To find out about this whole situation saddened me very much. Because if it happened anywhere else, it would be an outrage all over the news. It wouldn't even happen. The cop may have got fired that week. But in the city of Rochester, in this area, people accept it, and it's unacceptable. That's right. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. enough, is enough. And I'm so happy that everyone is out here right now together because we do have the power. The cop's job is to protect us, to protect and serve, not to beat on us, not to break our bones, not to slam us, not to brutalize us, and not to verbally attack us. Their job is to protect and serve us. That's right. Are they doing that? No. Enough is enough. Enough is Listen. enough. I'm just really happy that everyone turned together. Let's have a good march. Everyone be peaceful. Be happy. We have the power to change. We can make change. Don't feel that because you're from this area, because who you are, the way you look, how much money you make, you can't be changed or you can't make change. You are the change you want to be. God bless. Many has a court date that we need to support as well. May 30th. May 30th. Judge Miller, 9.30 a.m. Judge Miller, 9.30 a.m. We need to support him in all phases of this. All right. And by, and by supporting him, we're supporting you. That's right. right. This, yeah. is not, this is not a one-man show. Right. But this is like the Rosa Parks. Because we're just going to break this over with him. Right. <laughs> we're going to start this with him. Right. And, end it, and, and, and end it throughout the city of Rochester. Because it's going, they're abusing somebody, either physically or verbally, right now somewhere. Yeah. Right. In your communities. And when I say communities, you know I'm talking about the hood. <laughs> They're doing it right now as we speak. So what we're going to have to do it done now, Mark, I'm happy to speak after the rally, please. We're going to have the older and younger people. I need. I, I think I got to get up there too. <laughs> the older and younger people line up in front, and we're going to start our march. It's not going to be a lengthy long march. Unity today is my hallelujah. I Film the police. Film, film, film the police. Film the police. No racist police. No justice, no peace. No racist police. Film the police. Film, film, film the police. Film the police. No racist. This has to stop. Run a tape for the underclass Get the face, name and number on the badge They flash, we flash back when they act disorderly React accordingly and capture all that we see Night stick, zip ties and tasers Think your license for tight vicious behavior Make a tight mess with the video train Toward the pig like this He dripping, you make a pain us Explain to a judge the boundary you overstepping 2011, time to change our
our method. We aim at lenses like a state's weapon. Today, remember who's goddamn streets they're protecting. Yeah, they rather see me in a cell than me in my cell with a different story to tell. Can't go that by the dash next time you get stopped. Reach for the cellar if you wanna shoot a cop on the public sidewalk. You could take what you see. A film from your window with the view of the street. Neighborhood crime watch, we police the police. Uh uh, they can't arrest the whole community because the streets clock these cops occupying blocks, harassing the homeless with batons and pulling glocks. They stop low for protests and let off shots. Abuse prostitutes and misuse power they got. In memory of the victims who were never forgot. We gotta exercise our right to shed light in the dark. There is an army on the march, it doesn't want you to watch. You got a weapon in your pocket, whether you know it or not. We the people are the only real media we got. Let's protect one another from the fucking goon squad. Fascism coming to the USA. Hey yo, Sage, I got something to say. Film the police. Film, film, film the police. Film the police. Film, film, film the police. I think it was uncalled for. There's no reason for what I saw, on the, the little clip that I did see. That wasn't right. I mean, you, you call the police for the help you, not to hurt you. And who gonna, who gonna have faith in somebody that hurting you when you call them? I wouldn't. I'd be scared to call them. Well, make a comment about why you came out here today. Tell me your name. Ron Doucet, um, Benny Ward's a good friend of mine, and I don't like the way they did him. You know what I'm saying? They don't do that in the suburbs, but I come and do it in the city. We live here. They don't. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Rochester, okay, Indy Media. How are you? Did you want to make a comment? I sure, I okay. sure do. Tell me your name. Hi, my name is Margo Hoare. I'm from Buffalo, New York. I'm here to support my brother in the, um, the march that we're doing here today, trying to make a difference. The police officers, they all need to quit and stop. How did you, when you first heard the news about what happened to your brother, how did you feel? You know what? I felt hurtful. You know, because I looked at it where that it turned around like Rodney King, he's in he he's us uh, six feet under. He's resting in peace, but he's turning over behind this. Don't bring that back. We cannot have that to be here anywhere else. Because it could be your child too. How would you feel? How is your brother doing now? He's doing fine, but he's still going through the pain. And you know, and it's sad because when he go through the pain, I go through the pain because that's part of my blood. Do you want to make a comment to Indy Media why you came out today and why this is What do we want? Justice! What do we want? What do we want? Justice! It's just that, you know, this was just totally unacceptable behavior and there has to be accountability. What would you like to see happen? What part of that process? The police should say, he should be, should be brought to trial.
I'm with other different organizations. They call me Big Mouth Margo, okay? <laughs> because I tell it like it is and I don't hold nothing back, okay? Because I could get knocked down, knocked down like the same person can, okay? But I'm gonna tell you like this here. Speak and do the right thing, raising your children the best way because the system sucks and they need to do some changes. Yeah. When justice is routinely denied, and a community is routinely unheard and unlistened to, riot is the natural reaction. So, to avoid that, because I don't think we necessarily want that, right? To avoid that, though, what I think we need is organized social unrest. It's a very different concept. Right? It is an organized approach to to routinely telling these institutions that they cannot continue to act in the way they do in our neighborhoods and in our city without constant resistance. I want to just, one piece I'd like to briefly relay. I, I, have people seen Police Chief Shepard's recent bit on the radio? Yeah! <laughs> now there's something he said there that I think is worth taking a minute to digest. Go ahead, say it. He said, now there's... Let me, let me correct that. He said a lot of things. <laughs> I'm going to choose one of them for the moment. He said, you know, there's been a lot of work in this neighborhood, and we work closely with the business association, and they've tasked us with clearing the streets. Boo! Now, can we just take a moment? I know that the police are supposed to say protect and serve. They never really say who, <laughs> but they just did. It's all about Chief Shepard just did. He said the business association tasked us with clearing the streets. What he didn't finish was he meant the public streets of the citizens of this city that they are also supposedly protecting. Right, right. So as we realize more and more that businesses are largely what police protect, we realize that institutionally they need total changing. They need absolute, fundamental changing from the ground up. That happens through massive social change. That happens through people's organizations of hundreds of people. That happens when we don't show up today, but when we make it our habit to participate in movement building on a daily basis. Again, nobody deserves to be treated as our brother was treated. And so, uh, and again, uh, I just want to make correction with the, with the business association because I'm a part of it. We did not give the police the task to, to do what they did. Go ahead, that's right. Not at all. All right. As a matter of fact, if you all remember, Willie Lightfoot, who was a legislator, that's right. that's was, right. was, was suffered from police brutality yes. as well. Yes. Yes. Is that right? Yes. 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 So if a legislature can get that, and his father got police brutality right on the corner, is that right? Yes. So if legislatures can get uh, police brutality, we don't have a chance. But the chance we do have is when we come together like this in unity. We have strength in unity, is that right? We have a strong, a strong turnout and a lot of people got to see what happened here because it was on video and things like this happen pretty often I'm guessing and they don't um, get recorded and then the police and the media spin the situation to make people less sympathetic. So um, keep police accountable. This is uh, a, a society where people have the power and we need to seize that power in this age by recording and keeping the police accountable in any situation where stuff like this happens. Because we might need to turn out in a large group to make sure that these charges get, get dropped. We don't want an ACD. We don't want any sort of light uh, you know, sentence. We, we want a charge to drop. They need to be dropped. So we're going to be here to make sure that happens. Um, there's one statistic I just found recently. New York City has the horrendous stop and frisk program. You probably heard a lot about it. In 2007, 55% of marijuana arrests in New York City were people of color. In 2007 in Rochester, it's 80% of nonviolent marijuana arrests are people of color. So we don't have a drug problem in Rochester. We don't have a marijuana problem. What we have is a racist policing problem. And that has got to stop. I was recording the um, incident with Hop on the corner. And when I seen more police coming, I just got nervous because I'm thinking they're going to blitz me too. Like they was on, like, I don't know. So basically, I still stood out there watching, like, wow, that's crazy. 
And prior to that incident, I said a few days earlier, my my mom, my dad, and my older brother went through that same incident with the same police officers mm. on this same corner. Mm. So it's just real. It's 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 crazy to me seeing my mom get hit by a, a police officer, knowing if I do anything threatening to him, he'll back his gun out and do what he gonna do with it. So basically, I'm just saying like we ain't really getting no camera views and all that, but. It really did happen on the same corner with the same officers and everything. So this violence definitely enough is enough, man. You got it. Enough is enough. Um, I know that Vinny would like to say thank you to everybody. He wasn't able to be here, but the love that people have shown in this time goes beyond anything that we can probably imagine or could even think. And I just want to say thank you, community, thank God, and that, you know what, let's let's do something. Enough is enough! I was born by the river in a little town. Oh, just like the river I've been running ever since. It's been a long, long time coming, but I know a change gonna come. Oh, yes, it will. Y'all clap like this. It's been too hard living, but I'm afraid. Cause I don't know what's up there In the skies Look at my hands It's been a long Right Long time coming But I know Change gonna come Oh Yes, you will.